Aleluya, aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya. Let's praise this holy. Hallelujah. Come on, I know we can do better than that. I know we're excited to be in the house of the Lord. I know he has been a shield to you. I know he has been your strength. I know he has been your savior, your provider, your healer. Come on, give him praise. Give him praises. Come on, we didn't come here just together. We came here to praise his holy name. I'm excited for what God is doing. The seeds have been planted. Now we're seeing the fruits of them coming forth in our family, in our neighbors, in our kids. Look at the kids being here. Hallelujah. Come on, get excited. Somebody shout a hallelujah. Glory be to God. Gritale, hallelujah. Hallelujah, el Dios vivo. Glory. Welcome, welcome to Turning Point Fellowship. Woo, I'm excited. Thank you, Father. Facebook, YouTube, welcome. You know you still got time. We're going to have some worship right now. You can listen on your way over here. You can still Put on some PJs and come on down. It, it's okay. It's okay. Come on down and worship with us. You can sit in the back over there. Hallelujah. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Thank you for coming out. Before we get started, I, I want to do something different. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to turn around. I want you to say hi and smile and shake somebody's hand. At least three people. At least three people. Make sure you're smiling and make sure they're smiling at you. Come on, be excited, be excited. Tell me what God is doing in your life. Are we good? God bless you, brother. God bless you. Yes. Hallelujah. You guys came to worship? Amen. You guys came expecting a word? Yes. I came expecting to be changed. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get started. We don't have any announcements right now, but you know what? It's all right. I can feel the excitement in the people, the hunger, wanting to be different. Amen? Yes. Oh, yes, there, there is a, there is a rise man conference. That's right. That's right. I apologize. Do we, do we have that? Do we have that? The rise man. It, you know what? It's going to be this Friday and Saturday. This Friday... This Friday is going to be for everybody, so there will, there will be no child care. But you know what? Come on down. Bring your co-workers. Bring your neighbors. That person that you've been ministering, ministering to, tell them to come and tell them, you know what? We're going to have a great time. I just want to invite you to this Friday night. And if, and if it's, it's a man, bring him on Saturday. Tell him, you know what? You want to change? You want something different in your life? You got to do something about it. So come on down. I believe God has a word for you and your life will change forevermore. Amen. It did it for me. It did it for Brother Hugo. I don't know how many of you men would change when you came to the men's meetings. Amen? Well, it could happen. Don't lose hope on them. Don't lose hope on them. No matter how many times you've been inviting them, just keep inviting them. There is power in the what? Invitation. The invite. Amen? All right. So that, that's going to be on Friday for everybody and on Saturday just for the men. Let me hear you. When is, on Fridays for what? And on Saturday? Just for the men. So, ladies, let your man come. Amen? <laughs> and Sunday, of course, Sunday we have our regular service. Amen? All right. Oh, we have a special guest. Of course, it's you guys too. But we have a special speaker. Amen? You guys excited? You guys are still awake? I know some of you were cheering yesterday for that fight and everything. And, and today, come on. Come on. We, we just... Just be excited for what God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to start. I'm going to start with reading Psalms 105. It says, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. What name is that? Call on his name. Make known amongst the nations that he, what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. What we're about to do today is sing praises to him. And, and I want to encourage you to praise him like never before. To do something different today. Tell of all his wonders and acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done. Remember, you're an answer prayer. 
Your life has changed. You're not who you used to be anymore. He has changed and transformed your life. He has given you something new. Let's begin to walk on it. Let's begin to just live the beautiful life that he's given us. Look at the beautiful family he's given you. Look around you. He blessed you with this family. All descendants of Abraham, his servants, all sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. I want to tell you that you're not here by coincidence. You're here because he chose you. I want to switch it up a little bit. Dice en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Den gracias al Señor. Proclamen su nombre. Den a conocer sus obras entre las naciones. Cántele, entonenle salmos. Hablen de todas sus maravillas. Gloriese en su nombre, en su santo nombre. Alégrese el corazón de los que buscan al Señor. Yo no sé con ustedes, pero yo vine a buscar más del Señor. Busquen al Señor y su fuerza. Háganle siempre. Busquen su rostro. Amén. Oh, let us bow our heads and pray as we get ready to worship. Amen. Be excited as you come forward to worship His name. Just know that as you come and do something different, even if you take that little step, like Pastor says, it only took that jump for His life to change. It, only, it could take that one step for you to go forward. If you've never been on the altar, let this be your first time and lift your hands up and worship your God. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. For you are so beautiful, Father. And thank you, Father, for your presence, Father. This beautiful atmosphere, Father, you set up for us, Father. And as we come today, we come with a heart of gratitude, Father. We come to worship you, Father, because of who you are, Father. We come seeking more of you this morning, Father. We come, Father, leaving the things of this world, anything that was... That we've been trying to carry or been carrying throughout the week, Father. Or even yesterday or even this morning, Father, we got. We made it, Father. We're here, Father, and we just want to worship you, Father. We thank you for those that are coming, Father. We thank you for the, the visitor that's coming today, Father. We thank you for the word, Father, that we will be receiving, Father. For as we come, we came, Father, with our hearts receptive to hear your word, Father. We thank you as you, as we enter in, Father, you embrace us with your arms of love, Father. <laughs> oh, how we love you. How we worship you and we sing praises to your name. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for what you continue to do. And I thank you, Father, for what you're about to do here at Turning Point Fellowship. In the name of Jesus, we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Family, I just want to invite you to just come and worship. Come and worship your God. Amen.
Jesus, lift high the name of 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 Jesus, Lion of Judah, Lion of Judah, roar, Lion of Judah, roar. Lift high the name of Jesus. 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 Lift high
prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord. Like you don't know, you're not expecting that. You're not expecting God to change nothing in your life. You're not asking God to change something in your marriage, in your children, in your finances, in your health, in your mindset. Some of you are not even, even thinking about that. God has done great things in your life. Gone through great things in your life, and all of us have gone through that. I've gone through hell and back. I've gone through some deep valleys, and I've come over the top. I'm telling you right now in Jesus' name. I'm not going to let nothing or no one. I'm trying to encourage you guys right here. I can't believe the Christians are not at the altar. Every one of you should have something to be grateful for and thankful for. For that young man's life. Because you know, all of us, you back there too. You guys should be up here. Because your, your grandson and your son doesn't show up. And one day, you guys give up. Oh man, it's going to take a pressing. It's going to take a pushing. It's going to take to come on, keep it on. Amen. In Jesus' name. I want to encourage you. You want to be that move, that uh, fo a professional football player, baby? It's got to come from worship. You got to make God first. You got to be successful in life. It comes through worship. It comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Every one of us, I'm telling you guys right now, and all you that are in the back, what God has given you. Look at the gift he's given you guys. Babies. Not everyone gets to have a gift, baby. Not everyone. That's a gift from God. Amen? So we got to be grateful. Got to be thankful. Be thankful for your parents. You guys live a good life. You live a rich life. It's not poor life. You guys don't live. You guys live in Downey, big old pad. Swimming pool and everything. You guys live a rich life. You guys don't even know it because you guys just have that all the time. I just want to encourage you guys. Yes. 
Get out of your comfort zone. Come and praise God. Come and bless God. Some of you have been sitting there for months, years. You ain't made one move toward God. And things ain't changed. And things won't change. Can you make a move on God? Draw close to God, and he will draw close to you, the Bible says. But we got to draw close to him. And it's going to come with our worship or come with our praise, with the reading of the word, with an act, one step. One step, that's all it takes is one step. And God will do something different in your life. You've been living the same way for years and years, and things haven't changed. Have you ever thought about that? Why haven't things changed? That's what I wanted. I said, Father, my life is still the same, doing the same thing, just going in circles. And we can shanechamore all we want. We can dance all we want. It's until we take that step of faith. Take that step of faith. And some of you guys got to do that. I want to encourage you guys. I want to encourage you. He's not going to change until you change. He's your leader. You're his leader. You know, you know that. He follows you. He don't follow nobody else. We want him to follow Jesus though, right? You know? Exactly. Amen. Jesus. I don't want my kids following me unless I'm leading them to Jesus. Unless I'm leading them to Jesus. And I want to encourage you guys. You know, we're adults. This place was three quarters full before. What's going on with our church? Come on now. I know it's summertime and there's vacation time. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't understand Christians, nowadays Christians, completely different from the way I was raised in the worship and in the praise and the faith of God. Totally different. You play drums, me. Oh, come on now. Amen. That's in you. Music is in you. Worship is in you. Right there. Dance with your baby in your arm, man. That he'll get the rhythm. The same gift that was given to you will be given to him. The same gift of music, of worship, most of all, of toward God. These children got to learn to worship. And you ain't got to tell them to come. You just come. You just come. They'll worship God. You ain't got to tell your grandson, you know what, I'm just going to, you just go worship God. Estamos alabando al Señor. Y eso que queremos hacer, alabar al Señor. We want to do that. We want to bless God. I do. I got to stir myself up just like you guys. I want to feel sad. I want to feel sorry for myself. I want to feel sick. If I could tell you guys what goes against my body, I'm not going to tell you that. Because I live by faith. And I want to encourage you guys to come on out. You're gifted. You're gifted. Don't you want to make all league? All league. That's your goal right here, right? Little shortcoming. All league. To have your name being up there with all kinds of other players from other, from other teams. So I just want to encourage you guys. Fall in love with Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. One step of faith changes everything. One step of faith.
everything, Father. Everything that the enemy has placed over our lives. That you renew us today, Lord. That you renew me today, Father.
beautiful time, Father. That we worship you, Father. That we exalt your name, Father, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the renewing of our minds and our hearts, Father, as we worship you, Father. Such an honor and privilege, Father, to be here, Father. To exalt you, Father, your holy name, Father. And we say we love you, Abba. We love you, Abba. Hallelujah. Can't you just walk back to your seats? Pastor Juan, nice to see you. Okay. As we get into the, the tithes and offering portion of the service, I'm given the privilege of just talking on it for a minute. And uh, I promise not to keep you here for an hour. Malachi 3.8, what does it say? It says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to God's people. He's talking to us. Now, we hear that so much, we kind of take it for granted. Roll off the tongue, no biggie. But today, I'm going to take you in a little bit di direction, real quick. This is going to be a, a, a 
quick podcast. Santi, if you bring up Leviticus chapter 25, verses 2 to 4. God says, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land which I shall give you, then the land shall have a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyards and gather in its crop. But during the seventh year, the land shall have a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall not sow your field nor prune your vineyard. Why? Because the Sabbath, the seventh year, it belongs to the Lord. You're saying, how does this apply? Back then, this was like an agrarian culture. Their job? You go to the field, you raise crops, you bring it in. That was your paycheck. And what does God say? Six years, I want you to get out there and I want you to work the land. But the seventh year, forget about it, that's my year. You were to let the land rest and all the, all the trees, all the fruit trees, everything, fall to the ground. It's God's. It all belongs to God. Here's the amazing thing. Six years, that meant that in the six years, God really abundantly provided for them because he had to provide for them not only for the sixth year, but for the seventh year, and then also the eighth year until the crops came in. Now, seventh year, a year of rest, that belonged to the Lord. That was his portion. Do you think it took some trust to provide the Lord, for the Lord to provide? They had to live in faith. Who else has to live in faith? We do. We do. And yet we say, hey, I went to Jesus. I asked Jesus into my heart. I trust him for my salvation. But that 10 cents on the dollar, I don't know. You're asking a lot. That's a big step of faith. I only make 30 bucks an hour. Now, if you're going to step out in faith, you've got to actually put faith to it. I tell people all the time, you can tell a person's walk by their checkbook or nowadays, by their bank account on the computer screen. So what happened when they didn't give to the Lord? What happened when they robbed God and didn't give it to him? Remember I told you before, the Old Testament is what? What do you guys always hear me say? It's a picture, it's a type of New Testament principles. If you want to see what the New Testament principles are, are saying, look in the Old Testament and look and see how God works, how he operates. Spin up Leviticus, verses 33 and 35. Same chapter, 25. You, however, I will scatter among the nations and will draw the sword after you, and your land becomes desolate and your cities become waste. Then the land will enjoy its Sabbaths all the days of the desolation while you are in your enemy's land. Then the land will rest and enjoy its Sabbaths all the days of the desolation it will observe the rest, and it will observe all your Sabbaths while you were living in it. What is he saying here? The Jews were carried off into Babylon for a couple really good reasons. One, idolatry, but here's another big one. They failed to observe that Sabbath year. How many times do you think they failed to observe that seventh year that belonged to the Lord? Seventy years. Seventy years. How long do you think they were in Babylon? 70 years. The prophet Daniel saw this when he was reading Jeremiah, and he said, hey, we're coming up on 70 years. It said that because we failed to keep the Sabbath, that Sabbath year, we're going to be scattered. We're going to be taken to Babylon, taken away. That's exactly what happened, because they failed to give back to God what was God's. They stayed there for 70 years. 70 years for every year they failed to let the land rest. Now, where am I going with this? God's not broke. If you want to keep your money, you want to go to McDonald's, go. Go. But here's the principle of play here. If you rob God, there will be consequences. Why? Because there is a law of sowing and reaping that applies. If you sow, you don't want to, you don't want to give God back what is rightfully his. What do you think is going to happen? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Pastor Angel, who I love dearly, Amen. 
Why do you think he has me up here? Why do you think he, he drives me home? Because he needs money in the bank account? No. Turning point belongs to God. It doesn't belong to him or anybody else. You think, you think God needs you to give 10 cents on every dollar to keep the doors open? No, you can go to McDonald's every day, keep it all, but there will be consequences. There will be things that happen. You want to know why your car is breaking down? You want to know why the house needs paint so quickly? It's because you're failing to give God back whatever's his. Now, does this sound pretty harsh, pretty brutal? If a pastor stands up here and he tells you nothing but what you want to hear, you got the wrong pastor. If a pastor stands up here and tells you, you want to know why things are not going bad in your finances? Look here. Look here. This is a biblical principle. When somebody gets saved, the first thing I tell them is, go to church, get plugged in, stay in the word, pray, and tithe. Tithe. Not because, and I, and I don't care, I don't, and they may not come here, they may go to another church, but why am I telling them that? I'm telling him that for the same reason that Pastor Angel is telling you that. Because he wants the best for you. He wants the fruit that's going to come to your account. Not his. He wants you to bear fruit, and he wants you to be well taken care of. Hopefully, it's the same thing you're telling your kids. When your kids get, my kids, they get five bucks, honey, you owe the Lord 50 cents. Sounds stupid? That same little kid that heard that from me is now a tither. That same little kid has a big bank account, okay? It is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It is the same thing when you tell your kids, don't lie, don't steal, don't do the things that the Bible tells you not to do. Old Testament principles apply in the New Testament. Yes, you're saved, and yes, the Lord loves you, but if you want to unleash the full orb of God's blessings, they call it the sozo. If you want to unleash the full orb, Apply the principles. Apply the principles of tithing and giving. You want to be blessed. You don't want to be broke. And then don't go out there and buy a new Porsche just because, hey, I tithe it. You know, There's some biblical responsibility here. But I can tell you right now, the reason why I'm teaching this, the reason why I'm driving it home, isn't because the pastor wants a new Porsche. He wants to see fruit to your account. Amen. He wants to see you guys blessed. I want to see you guys blessed. Now. You guys have an opportunity right now to give. Not for me, not for anything else except doing what God says. Being obedient. Giving back to him what belongs to him. Not robbing him, but allowing him to bless you. To bless your life, to bless your finances. Giving is not only financially. Giving is in here. It's the guy that stands at the door and greets. It's the one who's walking in the parking lot. Giving. Giving back to the Lord. Amen? Now. If you need an envelope, these gentlemen here will be glad to give you one. What do you say, Pastor? These married men? These handsome married men will be glad to give you one. Raise your hands. All right. Okay, worship team. As the worship team plays, I'm going to ask you to come forward, bring your offering to the Lord, present it to him, pray over it, and watch how he blesses you. Amen? Amen. And don't forget about the phone number on screen and that QR code to give online. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Nobody greater, nobody bigger, nobody stronger, nobody like our God, nobody higher, nobody deeper, nobody wiser, nobody like our God, nobody greater, nobody bigger, nobody stronger, nobody like our God, nobody higher, nobody. introduce Fred. This is his young version. Thank you. All right, everyone, let's um, come together in agreement. Let's raise our hands. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Father. We bless your name, Father God. We thank you for this tithe and offering, Father God, that we give to you today, Father. I believe everyone is grateful giving today, Father God, with a grateful heart, with a changed heart, Father God. So we just thank you again, Lord God, for the tithes, Father God. We ask you, Lord God, to let it be uh, um, put together tenfold over, Father God, that the house grows, Father God, that we invest into your kingdom, Father God, because that's what your word says, to invest in your kingdom, Father God. So we just bless this. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, at this time, we are going to release the kids. There you go. There you go. That's our future pastors. Youth, youth. Okay, worship team, you are dismissed. Thank you. Okay, without further ado, Pastor Eric. No, I got it. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Cherish, can you come up here for a second? Praise God. Stand right here. Pardon me, I remember when I was teaching the class what your desire was. But the Lord reminded me right now. Do not be distracted. For the Lord says, get ready. For I'm getting ready to send you across. Your desires in your heart have been there. And you said, when, Lord? And there's been a season where you've like kind of given up and said, you know, maybe it was just me, but not God. But God doesn't give you something unless he's going to bring it to pass. And the Lord says he's bringing it to pass, so get ready. 
I don't know if you have a passport, but the Lord wants you to get your passport. But not only that, once you get your passport, you carry it in your purse. Wherever you have, you, wherever you go, because I, the Lord's going to confirm what I'm saying right now, that when you go, someone's going to say, do you have your passport? I got it right here. They're going to pray for it. Not only that, your passport will be filled, not just one page or two pages of countries that you'll go, but God's going to send you because you have vision. You have an eye for something special, the Lord says, because he gave you that. So the Lord says, get ready, because get ready to put on your seatbelt, because you're going to be running, and you better hurry up and get in shape. Well, you're in shape, praise God. But get in shape, because spiritual shape, because God is getting ready to send you. Don't worry about the finances. Don't worry about how it's going to be done. Your Heavenly Father will provide everything that you need because he's giving you that desire within your heart, that vision. So get ready for it's going to be fulfilled by the master, says the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to, today's message, I'm going to be getting in some of your guys' closets. You know those things that you hide in your closet? I, I don't know, Pastor, but sometimes, you know, I know with my grandmother, we had a closet, and she would turn the light on so you could see what's in there. Well, the Lord's going to turn some lights on closets that you have. Turn your Bible over to First Chronicles 12.32. And as they get ready to set up, as I get ready to set up the video the clip that I'm going to share, I want to share this word first. And from the sons of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brothers were at their command. Issachar, the Bible says that Issachar knew the times and seasons. They knew what's happening. They understood public affairs. They understood nation. They even understood that when Saul was getting ready to shift over to David, they knew. They knew the seasons. They knew the times. The church today should know the seasons and the times of what's happening. It is so obvious. Church, as we know, is not going to be as we, we, we've been having church. You know, there's such, I, I didn't even want to give the enemy credit, right, on the altar. We got, this altar's holy. And, and worship the honor, they're probably gone, but don't ever step on this altar without repenting if you have something in your heart. It's holy. It's holy. When you come up to the altar, those that are coming up, when you come and you put your hands on it, it's holy. Because the Bible says, I am holy, but can you be holy? And so we could see the season of time. You don't have to even be a prophet spiritual. You could see that darkness is covering this earth. Church, I, you know, Pastor Angel was talking about it's kind of, it's, you know, not as full as it usually is. Maybe vacations. You should thank God for this, Pastor. You know why? I know of a church that closed their services for a month on Wednesday. Give me a chapter and verse for that. Because why? It's, it's summer. Yeah, ministers, we need time. I'm not saying we don't. But you don't close up church. Because, you know, who may be at that door knocking that day that they're committing to commit suicide, but they can't go in because they're on vacation. But darkness comes near. Churches are attacked. People are coming into church, shooting people, compromising. The enemy is in is, is coming in like a, a rushing wind. Yeah. Um, not a rushing wind, a mighty flood. But you know what? There is change coming to the body of Christ. Amen. There is change coming to the body of Christ. And, and love you guys up there in the upper balconies. <laughs> but you know, I don't know, when I, was in the, when I was in the world... I could only afford those kind of seats. <laughs> you want to go to a God? And I was like, man, I wish I could come down, you know. Look at these seats, brothers, sisters. 
We need to come down. We're going to show a video clip. And uh, just before I show it, all of you are leaders. I'm not talking about leaders in the church, but all you are leaders, leaders in a home. You're in your job, you could be lead, you're, but you're leaders. So t- listen to this very carefully as he's talking about leadership. Jack Welch once said, change before you have to, how true that is. Championship leaders understand that in order to remain relevant and competitive, they must foster a culture that embraces change. When you think about the brands that have been around for 100 plus years, how they looked in the beginning is much different than how they look now. They changed. The brands they once competed with no longer exist. Why? They didn't change. Grace Hopper once said, the most dangerous phrase in language is, we've always done it this way. As the leader, you must relentlessly fight this mindset. Don't allow your team to focus on how things used to be, because used to be's don't make honey. Instead, focus on how things are gonna be. Gonna be's make honey. Gonna be's have a clear vision of the future and how they need to grow in order to become that better version of themselves. They understand constant growth requires constant change. Remember what John Maxwell once said, change is inevitable, growth is optional. Close your eyes and visualize what things will look like in three years. How will you need to evolve in order to meet that vision and be a front runner in your space when the time comes? What changes do you need to make? Start making those changes now. As the leader, you have the remote. If you don't like the channel you're on, nobody can change it but you. So stand up and change it. And don't be afraid of the naysayers. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, do what you feel is right, for you will be criticized anyways. Trust your instincts. Pursue your vision. Even if no one else sees it, just start the journey. The others will follow. And stay ready. New levels will bring new devils. But the higher you climb, the stronger you'll get. Take pride in being a professional problem solver as you rise. Remind your team, that every change you make is an effort to get better. You don't change for the sake of changing. Like Jim Rohn said, life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. At the core behind every big change is a why. And that why is to get better. Change. It seems like I've been t- I was thinking about this message and it's like I'm talking about change most of the time. But that's where God has me. The message that he wants is that the body of Christ needs to change. We need to change individually. The body of Christ needs to change individually. But we need to start changing. In fact, I was thinking about this, Pastor Angel, on the, the ministry that all of you know that I'm over the founder of is Arise Men of God, right? But lately, God's been making a change in my heart. The ministry is not to just raise men of God, but it's to raise warriors of God. Big difference. See, a man of God, we could be man of God and praise God. But I even, even see this like a rise man of God to like men to warriors. Because I believe God is calling warriors to rise up. A minimum, a, a, a remnant of warriors that are willing to stand and pray and to praise God and to go forward and stand and everything. But you know what? Don't get me wrong. It's not just men, it's women. It's humanity. It's a body of Christ standing together, husbands and wives, standing together and taking the enemy out. Amen. Hezekiah knew the seasons and the times. You just look at it and you could see the, what's happening. Hebrews 12.27 says this from the God's words translation. The words once more show clearly that God will change what he has made. These are the things that cannot be shaken. The only, the only one, or the only the things that cannot be Shaken will remain. Okay, let me, after I was speaking in tongues right now, let me give you the understanding. 
Those things in your life, when there's a shaking that takes place, only those things of the word of God will remain. Those promises that God made will remain. Bible says that God changes not. He hasn't changed his plan for humanity. It's still the same. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you shall be saved. And that your name, our names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But there's a problem that we find. God's grace, it's like the body has taken advantage of God's grace about sinning. This is where I'm going to, we're going to open up the closet. There's, a, there's a, a fable that says that if you get a frog and you put it in hot water, it'll jump out. But if you get frog in a lukewarm water, Josie, it'll start swimming. And it won't know it's dying because you turn on the bottom. But it's so fine right now, they become used to it, Pastor Joe. And so they end up dying. Why? Because... They thought it was okay to live, to be in that atmosphere. And yet, God's saying, we have some, the body of Christ is living in that atmosphere. Okay, I'm one of these ministers that I don't believe in secular music. I can feel the stones already thrown. You know, I, you know, I cannot listen, I, I grew up, before the Lord, John Travolta. Okay, I was John Travolta fan. Come on, Jerry. I used to have the moves, Jerry. <laughs> See, come here, brother, man. And, and, and there was a, a, a song that was scriptural, Staying Alive, Staying Alive, <laughs> right? But I don't listen to that, even though I like that song. Why? Well, it doesn't talk about hell, but it starts taking me back to where I was when at that time. And I started thinking about, oh, man, that's pretty good. And I don't even watch John Travolta's movies, Dancing. I forgot, I even got the name of the movie, but I'm sure some of you know it. What? I don't know. I, Saturday night. Oh, who was that? Who was that? All right, we're, we're going to pray for Fred when he comes up pretty soon. <laughs> he must have watched it last night. But I don't watch them. And the Lord's showing me that even the body of Christ is watching horror movies. Oh, I can handle it. And it's true, we can handle it. But you're becoming like that frog that's in the warm water that says it's okay. You want to listen to secular music? Then we're like listening to, to like, like I said a while back, what the, the Lord told me about the enemy. He's saying, what he still said to Eve, did God really say that? Did God really say that? But then the other thing that the enemy is using right now to the body of Christ, did God really mean that? Did he really mean that? I can't, you know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, what does light have to do with darkness? And so we're like that frog swimming in, in Luke. It's not dark, it's not light, but it's okay. I mean, there are some movies I like. There's, there was this program I was watching. I, I like uh, martial art movies. And there's a program on Channel 5, I can't even remember it. And I started watching it because I liked that action, right? But it started getting into the supernatural. It started going into places that I knew I, got, I can't watch that. And so what did I do? I said, you know, I, okay, I'll be on transparent. I didn't turn it off right away, okay? But I said, you know what? This is wrong. This is wrong. For me to watch a movie in the supernatural that has nothing to do with God is wrong. To us, to watch horror movies is wrong. You know, there are hardly any movies that you cannot even see 
that doesn't have some kind of demonic influence in it. I mean, I'm a Hallmark fan, okay? I watch Hallmark. I love Hallmark. Because I always say, at the end, will they get together? <laughs> of course, you know. But I, I enjoy Hallmark. But then they even compromise. And now they're breaking programs about two guys or two women, you know. People, companies are compromising because the body of Christ is compromising. The church is compromising. The church cannot say it's okay to watch horror movies. It's okay what, what you listen to. Because we will go, but don't think, oh, you're wrong. Because I believe, you know what? When God comes and shakes, those things that can be shaken will be shaken off. What do you have left? What promises do you have left? Oh, what was it? I can't remember the scripture. Oh, what was it? But I can remember the song. Staying alive, staying alive. That's what I want to do, you know? You know why I'm sharing it? Because I love you. I was... <laughs> My wife's gone. She went, no, she's coming back. But she went to a prophetic conference. And so I did the husband kind of things. I'm not really good at tools and painting. So I'm not even good at cars. I have a Jeep, but my son-in-law takes care of it. But I did the husband kind of things. I made my bed each morning. <laughs> All it was was pouring the covers over, <laughs> you know. But not only that, I changed light bulbs that have been off for a year or two. I even watched the fixture that was surrounding it. And in fact, I changed the light bulbs. I mean, I just really worked at it. I changed the, the, the light bulbs broke, and I had to change it because I was, fo I was focused on that. And, so I changed, and then I went to Walmart, Pastor Angel, and they only sell light bulbs in threes. Where'd that come from? So I changed my two, bright, clean. Then I changed my light bulb. She had an old light bulb. And so it's one that's like real light and one is dull. So after church today, I go step at Walmart and get another light because I don't want her to think, how come you have more than me, right? But I, those are just little things that I did, right? Let's see if next week when she comes, if she, if she, hey, did you notice what Pastor Eric did? did he, what did he do? <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but we need to change. <laughs> it was good anyway. <laughs> but we, we cannot continue to watch what we're watching. We cannot continue to listen to what we're listening to. You start watching things and says, man, I wish he looked like that. I wish she looked like that. You know, that, that interferes with intimacy. And, and not only sexual intimacy, just intimacy, hugging. Yeah, I have a little more to hug than before, but it's all good. But we have to understand is that when Jesus said, what does light have to do with darkness? I don't, I don't like to say, um, I have to say this. There was a church opening a couple of months back. And in their opening, they had Beyonce song. And they're supposedly praise dancers. Dancing, I don't know what you call it, but their, their butt is going up. And, uh, huh? Okay, whatever that is. <laughs> but they're doing it on the altar and they're doing it and they're opening this church Beyonce what are you thinking they're thinking how can I bring my church to make it full see we Turning Point is going to teach to uncompromised word and if those people don't want to if they want to hear something sweet Oh, it's okay. You know, you can do this and you can do that. I want you to enjoy life. 
but only those, a remnant, that will say, you know what? I want to be holy. I want to be what God's called me to be. I'm going to go to a church that preaches a gospel that will not compromise. But God's going to shake. He's going to shake. You know the difference between David and Saul? And this is where we need to get, it's not even on my notes, but we're, Saul was the king of Israel. Samuel anointed him as king because he's big, handsome, and so forth. But when he sinned and he rebelled against the, the directions of God, he didn't die. He just lost and gave up his destiny. See, David sinned, we know that, with Bathsheba. Because the Bible says what? When the kings were out warring, he stayed home. Sometimes we should be in church and we're out in the movies. We're out doing something else where we should be in church. And then we understand, well, how did I get in this mess? We need to understand the difference between Saul and David was that Saul blamed what well, was the people that made me sacrifice. It was the people that wanted to do this. He justified his sin by blaming everyone else. Who does that remind you of? Adam. It was the woman you gave me. Husbands, we better straighten up. And come on, husband, don't raise your hands, but I'm sure there's times... Lord, it's the woman you gave me. I'd be perfect if it wasn't for her. <laughs> but we have to realize we can't lie and trick God. You could come up and you could lie and you could trick, try to trick the pastor or myself and say, uh, how's everything? Oh, I'm fine. What you do last night? No, you know, I was just relaxing. Relaxing doing what? Let's get out of the lukewarm pot because your destiny is at hand. Your destiny is, is now that God, we can lose our destiny, not our life, but we can give it up. But God's purpose is still going to happen. I'll tell you how. As a founder of a rise man of God, and in Jesus' name, his mercy and his grace is upon my life. But if I mess up and I walked away, a wise man of God will still keep going because it's not about me. He'll find another man that loves God that will keep it going. I believe that and I, I stick to that. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. God is so good. The Bible says in Romans 2, 4, it's the goodness of the Lord that brings repentance. The goodness of the Lord. Well, I really haven't felt God's goodness. I mean, I've been playing games, you know, but I haven't found God's goodness. Guess what? You're still alive. You still have an opportunity to repent. That's why 1 John 1, 9 says what? Confess your sins. He is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. When Pastor Angel was calling you to the, to the altar, he was saying, come. And if you have sin, go ahead and, and repent and, and ask God to forgive us. For all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. We blow it. Am I the only one that ever blows it? We all blow it. But what we do when we blow it is, is, is going to be, we're either going to be like a Saul or we're going to be like a David. And David knew I'm, I was wrong, I blew it, and he, take, he took responsibility for his sin. Let's take responsibility for when we mess up. Let's take responsibility for the sin. Let's not be the pastor or the head usher. He made me sit there. I'm just taking off, man. I, I'm, I'm, I don't like it because Pastor Eric got in my closet and was, he was saying things against what I like. No, it's God's word. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies 
a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind in order to prove by you what is that good and pleasant and perfect will of God. And you know, some people have read it, well, I just be the good. I don't have to be the pleasant or the perfect. That's perfect kind of hard, so I'll just be the good and, and maybe the pleasant, but the perfect is kind of hard. No, it's all together. It's not just part of it. The word uh, beseech, the Hebrew word is perica, no, the Greek word is parakaleo. It means to instruct, teach, to exhort or strongly encourage, admonish, warn or reprimand someone firmly. God calls us to make a choice about the way we live for him. Are we living for self or are we living for God? If we're into horror movies and those other movies, the rated R movies and, and, uh, and listening to secular music, we're living for self. That's tough, isn't it? But you know what? The Bible says you're supposed to love me anyway. Amen. Right? Look at that. <laughs> But he says to encourage, to admonish. I know that another term is beg. I, I have a hard time with that because I'm here to admonish you. I'm here to strongly encourage you. Let's change. Like the video said, we need to change. We can't stay the same way. We can't keep on doing church, our living church the same way. We got to start growing. We start, you know. One of the things, and, and I, Pastor Angel, I, I enjoy our fellowship that we have, and I was telling them about my life, and I'm telling them about what God's calling me to do. And I was telling them that, you know, you hear God, and you hear God what he's calling you to do. And I told them, well, you know, the Bible says to study to show yourself a proof. So what I did was I got, I mean, a thick book. I mean, I like thin books with big print, you know, but I got two thick books that I read regarding that subject. Why? Because I don't want to, if, if God's going to do something in my life, I, I want to know something about it, right? And so you need to change. If you're, if you're listening to secular music, Why? Why are you listening to secular music? Why? Is that better than worshiping God? Listening to someone that's worshiping the Lord? And then we come up here and, and Diego leads and they're worshiping, holy, 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 holy. Then you go out to the car, what station are you listening to? What CDs do you have in there? Pastor Angel, I... I feel led that we should go check everyone's car when we get out. <laughs> I'm only kidding, okay. <laughs> uh, don't check my car. <laughs> I got my iPhone. <laughs> but we need to see what we're doing. Because you list our list, I mean, I, I got saved at 29. And I did, I partied, you know. I was like, my sister used to say, when I, whenever I go to a party, I started to dance. That's how much I love dancing. I love music. And I listened to the old songs, and they start touching my heart. Oh. You know, because, you know, um, I happened to have a worldly life before God gave, uh, put my wife and I together. But if I started listening to those songs, what do you think it's going to do? It's going to bring me back not only to where, but with who. What, when when you're, you can't sleep and, you're, in the, and you ha, you're finding that spirit of fear, you say, I don't know. I just fear so fearful. What have you been watching? Change. You got the remote, just change it. Turn it off. Go to YouTube, and there's a lot of, 
I was watching a Christian movie last night. It was really good. Called The Champion. There are not a lot, but there are some. Or listen to some speakers. Or listen to worship. Turn on a Turning Point and listen to the last message or something like that. But there's so much out there. Why is a body of Christ going to the world? Even we're, we're, we're what do you call it, uh, people friendly? I'm going to have lights and smokes. Smoke, smokes, <laughs> no. Smoke. <laughs> and this is me, okay? I, it's not Pastor Angel, it's, not, it's just me. I have a hard time when the lights go off while you're worshiping the Lord. I asked a sister one time, a good friend of mine from TBN, and I go, why do you lower the lights? Well, you know, some people, they don't feel comfortable raising their hands, and we want them to, we want them to feel comfortable. Wait, wait, aren't we supposed to be worshiping God? And, you're, and you want the lights low? And then there was one church I went to, and, there, and, and it was lights were on, they receiving an offering, and, and so I was going to give an offering, but they turned off the lights. I couldn't see what I was writing. And I wasn't going to make a mistake. One, zero, 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 zero. No, it's not going to happen. Darkness. Are you trying to make it an atmosphere for the comfortable? Or shouldn't we make it an atmosphere for the praise and worship that the Kabbalah, the Shekinah glory would come down and fill this place? That's, that's just me. But it said, beseech ye, strongly encouraged this morning. Conform, the word conform. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this in Greek. It was a little... But it means to conform oneself, one mind and character, to another pattern. Fashion self according to the world, the world system, the popular culture, manners of thinking that is rebelling against God, to try to conform us into an ungodly, pa- ungodly pattern that proceeds and must be, we must resist it. Now, the thing is, is that we're people that like to copy. Is there anyone that likes to copy other people? Because you know what I noticed? When they started cutting the jeans, Beth, I saw so many people cutting the jeans. And I, I, I was telling Pastor Angel, man, I had holes and we used to get patches to cover those jeans. If I would have known, Pastor, that they were going to be expensive, I would have saved them and sold them and made money. But I, I put a cover in, ooh. and then they had this thing, oh my God, Sisters, I don't, not you, but it's like the right here, they tuck in their blouse or something like and they leave it open. What is that all about? And then you see ministers with their cut Levi's, they're ministers with the lights and the smoke, and then you see the, 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 the I don't know what you do, the, yeah, the tucked in. We're so easy to follow a, a pattern. And God said, don't be conformed to this world. What else are we following? What else that we are like so simple to just, they're doing it, so I'm going to do it. Do not be conformed to this world, to be to conform to this culture, but we are to transform the culture to the word of God. Not conform, but transform. But yet, you know, let me go dancing. And you know what? If you're going to dance, dance with your spouse. And stop, and, ma- and mamas, stop trying to make your, especially your son, start dancing with you. He's like so crazy. My, my wife, come on, Zach, come on, dance with Nana. And they're like, no, 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 leave me alone. <laughs> Transfer, the word transfer is to change to another form, to transfer, to transform. We are to change into the image of God. 
not conform to this world, not to conform to the customs of this world, to, to be transformed. How is the world going to be transformed as we're conforming to them? How can you tell if someone's unsaved and you're doing the same thing that the world is doing, how do they know the difference? How we are to be the salt of this earth, we are supposed to be the light. But if we're acting up and what do you listen to? Well, transform. Not, we are not to conform to this world, to this culture, because this culture has so many things, so many traditions that we can want to do. High five. Almost done. Renew, it means to renovate, completely change for the better. I like the renewal part. It's like a house. You don't, a lot of times you don't tear the house down, the foundation, you just renew it. New roof, new paint. You're, you're, you're changing it, but you're making it look better. You're not, see, we have a foundation. Our foundation is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are to now renew. We are to change, to be more like Christ and not the world. The more we do of the world, when the shaking comes, and God's going to do a shaking. Hey, guy talked about shaking the heavens and earth. And then in, in Hebrews, he said it again, shaking the heaven and earth. He will shake and shake those things. My question to you today, if God came shaking, what's going to last in your life? How much of the word and the time we spend with God is in us compared to the time we spend in the world and the time we spend away from God. What's going to be left? Because the Bible says that those things that are not of him will be removed. So what's left? Oh, my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Barely make it to heaven. But we need God. My ending, I promise. This is about change. Planting a tree in a pot at the beginning is good. You know, you ever get a little pot and you plant, right? But keeping a tree that is growing in the same pot will stunt its growth. And it will eventually die. The tree must be replanted in a new pot and even in the earth in order for it to grow to its fullness potential. I actually wrote that. I don't know how. <laughs> okay, Lord. We are trees. But if you're, gonna, if you're not going to change in your home or where you're at, you'll die. You'll stunt your growth. You'll be the same way. It's like a, a child staying in the first grade and he's supposed to be in the sixth grade. You stunt your growth. Your destiny is grown. God has plans for our life. We know in Jeremiah 29 11. We, God has plans for our life. You're either going to fulfill those plans or you're not. And you're not going to fulfill those plans or there will be a delay if, you don't, we, if we don't change. We need to, some of us are outgrowing our pot. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> Some people are, you know, you're outgrowing your pot that you were born in. And some still like, oh, man, I still got more room to grow. But the Bible says we are to occupy here until he comes, returns. And so your growth, depend on your growth. And don't depend on Pastor Angel or the guest speakers to feed you. Get your spiritual blessed behind and start reading some books. I had some books out there giving away. Giving them away. No, I don't need it. I have very many books. Have you been reading those books? Have you studied them? 
Now, I'm not saying you copy, but you, you can, yeah, when I read a book, I was telling Pastor Andy, I say, Lord, Holy Spirit, give me a revelation of what I'm reading. The writer has certain understanding, and you go, but I want a revelation. I want more. Start reading books. Turn off that TV and, and start go, watching some spiritual programs. And get rid of our secular music. I think, to me, secular music has the most harm. I mean, I, I know we see, but secular music, the reason I say that is because, come on, I was at Firestone, I think I was changing my battery, Pastor Angel, and they have secular music. Stop it! <laughs> that beat, you know, it, it, you know, music, that's why Lucifer was in charge of the worship. He knows. And, and every time you listen, every time we listen to secular music, we're, we're worshiping Lucifer because that's what he's been wanting. Oh, look at them. They're listening to that old song that they played 10 years, 20, 30 years ago. God gave us, a, uh, gave us an out when we mess up. I'm going to ask you to please stand. This, you know, I told you I was kind of like straining out my side of the room, and so I have a whole bunch of stuff on my nightstand. It was a mess. I had papers, peanuts, you know, all my, and my wife's her nightstand is so organized and stuff like that. And, but I, I was, it was a mess, but I cleaned it up. I had my colognes right and my papers right. And then I noticed something, Pastor Angel. I, there was a medication uh, that I had that I never used. The medication was nitroglycerin. And nitroglycerin is for if you have a heart attack, you are to take it. I was diagnosed a while back with a heart attack. That they were so clear that here, I want you to take it with you. If you have a heart attack, driver, I want you to take this. Praise God, I haven't needed it. But I, but I realize I'm here at turning point and with the arisement of God because God has given me grace to live as long as I've lived. But eight times, God is, I, I could have died. this I want to do what God's called me to do before I go to the heaven I may have year I may have several years I may have months doesn't because we don't know but I do want this I don't want to face Jesus when he said I told you to preach that message and you want it you felt bad because they're not going to like you but I'm going to preach a message that God has given me to encourage you, strengthen you, because I don't want to go to heaven without being obedient to God. Amen. Now, what you do with the message is totally up to you. You can go on and listen to secular movies, watch horror movies and R-rated movies and do whatever you want. It's up to you. All I did was tell you God's word. Amen. Now, you're accountable to God. And, uh, and I know that uh, Pastor Angel, it was, it was kind of a hard, like, oh man, I was watching a real nice movie about forgiving and love. And I go, oh, oh my God, can I, can I have one thing? Just give me two minutes. The picture. And this is, this will hit it all. I promise. This is my fifth closing. 
<laughs> See this picture? In 2008, Hurricane Ike went to Florida and destroyed everything. Everything around except that one house. Everything was destroyed for miles except that one house. And I, and I thought, oh, maybe they're Christians. They prayed. You know what is the difference? The difference is that they had a house that was torn down uh, several years ago, so they rebuilt. This is about change, people. This is about change. They rebuilt it, but what they did was they put a 16 feet of their house I, I, you can't see it, but under their house is like 16 feet of wood of, of uh, I don't know, pillars or whatever you call it, foundation. foundation, and 16 feet, they were prepared for the shaking. They were prepared for whatever happened, I'm going to still stand. That picture is famous. My question to you, if something happens, will you be like that house are the other houses destroyed? It's time to change. It's time to repent and change our life. I want that picture. I want that picture to be in your heart, to remember. If you want to go back to the world and do things wrong, you're going to be like that other place. But if you stick to Jesus, if you hold on to his word, if you pray and you start worshiping, you change your music and you change your movies, you'll be, we will be that house that is still standing. Because they prepared, they worked, they did something to prevent damage, to prevent destruction. Are you doing, going to do something to prevent destruction for your life? Father, I pray as obedient to give your word. Kind of hard, Lord, for me, but I know your word and I hear your voice. And I just pray, Lord, that we stop playing games. That we turn, Lord, and destroy anything of the world that's in our lives. That the only thing that we want is you, Jesus. You are the author and perfecter of our faith. And I ask that when the shaking does come, that all of us will be like that house still standing. That light for everyone else to come to. I bless Turning Point Fellowship people, every member. I thank you that we are raising a standard like the men's ministry, men of a higher standard. Lord, the whole church at Turning Point is to be a, a church of a higher standard. Not like the world, not like anything the world has, but like the kingdom of God. Let your will be done. Let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I bless everyone that they have a safe trip home, but Lord, get this word and root it, that it stir something within them to, to just love you and to consecrate their lives. In Jesus' name, and we all said, amen. 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 Let's give the Lord now. Okay. What I need you to do is get your cars, come over, and Pastor Angel is going to, no, I'm only kidding. You're dismissed.